copy, 595, but we are not authorized. So close to you. Stand close, bro! The alarm we're gonna have to storm their positions, but we gotta get closer. And hold there until they stop to reload. K2 base, this is out. caught up on like oh uh, I'm taking out the CPU no <laughs> so um, uh, I'm not really sure what happened there but the system kind of shut itself off by itself as soon as I put any kind of load on the processor um, I was using prime 95 and uh, Oh, this is the Angel ITW2240 from John's Bow. I'm not sure if you can see that, by the way. And yeah, um, I did notice that the idle temps of this cooler were significantly higher than something that I normally see at about 50 Celsius lowest on idle. And the last I saw it before it shut itself down was temperatures breaking that. 80 to 90 Celsius, so yeah, that might have something to do with it. Uh, this was kind of supposed to be a normal review of sorts of a liquid cooling loop, but I think at this point it's going to be more of an investigation to see exactly what is up with this guy. Uh, so let's just kind of run through the thought process that I went through into figuring out what was wrong uh, with this guy. The first thing I thought of course was maybe that the mounting wasn't really all that secure in the CPU and that the code plate wasn't really contacting the IHS. Uh, I think that there's some truth to this because the mounting system at least for AM4 kind of sucks as well and I noticed the kind of bad spread of the uh, thermal paste when removing and examining both the cooler and the IHS. Uh, but if that was really true, then it may have maybe worked on an Intel-based system, no problem. But I tested it on a Intel Core i7-4930K and I noticed very, very, very similar things where even without stressing the CPU, it was sitting on idle at about 55 Celsius or so peaking out at 62 celsius and yes this is on idle where the cpu isn't really doing anything so yeah i wasn't really too keen to find out what happens if i stressed it out of course i also noticed that the code plate was much 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 more coarse than usual where i'm used to manufacturers giving close to a mirror finish on this but it's super highly unlikely that that is totally the culprit. I mean it sucks but it's not like 20 degrees of suck you know what I mean? So then I move on to the next logical conclusion which is the pump and so I do what any normal tech geek does. I took apart the cooler itself by removing the screws from the pump head and started to examine the insides of the cooler itself. I have of course taken apart more than a few coolers before and I've noticed performance degradation before even on my Thermotech Water 2.0 performer but that was kind of due to this calcium like buildup in the copper micro fins that obviously impede water flow. Uh, to which I saw nothing of the sort here, just a standard green coolant fluid. The next logical step then, well maybe there's something wrong with the pump. And so I drained the entire loop completely, then plugged in the pump head into a 12 volt source and the pump head spins without any problems, so this is getting weirder and weirder. I mean, it all works, so I decided to test the cooler once more. Uh, this time I refill it with some distilled water and here's a little test that I like to do to test if there's anything wrong with these coolers before sticking them into a live system. I use a heat gun that is hot enough to disorder components. In fact, this is what I use to actually do some of my surface mounted component repairs. And I pretty much have it running while pressing my finger onto the cold plate. You can kind of obviously see where this is going. If the pump isn't working, then the cold plate heats up in no time and the copper plate gets too hot to touch after a very short while. 
which is strangely not what I observed after changing the fluid. In fact, I kept the heat gun running on the copper plate for a good one minute or so and it stayed super cool even then, so much so that after one minute I instantly touched where the hot air contacted the copper plate and it was hardly hot. I probably ended up fixing something then, maybe, I don't know. So now that it's actually working, I stick it back into the system and it works. Temperatures were actually not too bad as well given that the fans were really silent in operation and when I swapped out the fans with my GT2150s, I even got the best score that I've seen from any Chinese liquid cooling loop that I've used and tested. The one thing that I did notice however was occasional spikes of the temperatures up like 5 Celsius or so when being stressed out but these would climb back down quite quickly. I think that maybe there is something wrong with the uh, design where the impeller is not really spitting at all or maybe I got a lemon unit with a failing pump motor that I somehow managed to get working. Either way, I feel kind of conflicted with this one. I obviously can't say that I fully recommend it because it failed hard on me in the beginning but after a bit of cleaning and diagnostics, it came back as one of the best liquid cooling loops that I've tested to date, dethroning everything else that I've tested so far, minus of course the spikes in temperatures, which is a valid point of concern. It comes with RGB as well and that's not user controlled whatsoever and it kinda has its own thing going on but I do think it looks kinda cool and pretty. And the fans of course are more focused on noise levels. Uh, more so than performance. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know what to think. On one hand, I somewhat fixed a faulty cooler and have a really high performing part on my hand now. But on the other, it does raise a lot of questions about maybe the QC and build quality of these uh, John's Bow coolers. It's a very, if they don't work, they suck hard. But when they do work, they are actually pretty good. I'm tempted to give this one a hard fail, but it's kind of working well now. You know, maybe tell me what you guys think about this kind of scenario. It's not the most expensive or cheapest unit that I've tested either, coming at a 5027 USD or so. And yeah, maybe in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing, even if it misbehaves, you'd still know how to get the uh, best out of this cooler, or at least, you know, you can follow what I did. Anyway, today's content was a little bit different from what I'm used to, but if you like these kinds of videos, uh, give it a like to, you know, <laughs> maybe share some of this kind of knowledge. Don't forget to drop your comments and subscribe to my channel for hopefully less, but I kind of don't mind either way, uh, videos like these. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent, and I will see you guys around.